I am the senior marine biologist with Eagle Wing Tours, and I'm also the um, director of our uh, Exploring the Salish Sea Education Program. Uh, my <laughs> name is Megan, <laughs> and I, I am a marine naturalist for Eagle Wing, and I'm also part of the education program as one of the facilitators. I think it's because like, there's so many different things that we get to do. Um, so one of them is that we're a marine naturalist. So we get to go on these boats and we get to educate people from all over the world on uh, the biology and the ecology of this beautiful body of water, uh, the Salish Sea. Um, we also get to do things um, like a lot of program outreach um, and community outreach. So we, we participate in World Oceans Day, we do events at the Royal BC Museum, and we also work with World Fisheries Trust for Science Literacy Week and others. Um, and gosh, another thing is we get to do this amazing school program mm -hmm. um, where it's grades four to eight and we take um, 1,600 to 1,800 kids out a year um, and we get them hands-on experience on exploring their beautiful uh, blue backyard, the Salish Sea. We work with a couple different projects, which is really exciting. One of them is with World Fisheries Trust. This is one of actually my favorite projects, collecting data on uh, schooling fish, forage fish, mainly herring and so we're able to collect this data visually as well as we have a GoPro that sometimes we're able to stick uh, the GoPro into the ball of bait fish and record video footage which is really exciting as well as collect scale samples. Uh, we also do a fecal sample collection for Dr. Anna Hall and she's doing her PhD studying what humpback whales are eating. And I actually got one of the lucky trips to collect this fecal sample a few weeks ago. And it was really fun. Again, our passengers were super engaged and we have special nets that we're able to collect this fecal sample with. Very glamorous, of course. I was the one who had gloves on, actually got it on my hands, which is kind of fun to say you got humpback poo on your hands. <laughs> only, a true, only a true nerd would say that. But then we got the results back that these two humpbacks were eating juvenile herring and, and sand lance. Anna Hall is actually, she does uh, porpoise, porpoises. So she, um, the doll's porpoise and the harbor porpoise. There's actually seven types of harbor uh, porpoises, sorry, worldwide. And we have two here in the Salish Sea. So what we're doing is we're looking at distribution. Uh, we're also looking at numbers, male, females, and the hybrids of the harbor porpoise as well as the doll's porpoise. So we're working with Dr. Anna Hall on porpoise studies. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that we're doing is photo identification of humpback whales as well as the orca or the killer whales. Um, so you can identify these animals based on their, their fingerprints, whether or not it's the underside of the humpback's tail or the saddle patch of the orca. And it's really incredible. Like sometimes we have orcas that are coming in from California. So you can figure out distributions you can figure out where they're going. Um, we can monitor the, the populations as well. Um, it's an, the whale watchers are actually the ones who find the whales for a lot of the researchers and then we communicate to them where they are so that they can do studies and stuff on them. So through this program, I always wanted to be a researcher, but I actually found the power of education and experience through this job and that's kind of where my passion went to. I find that the more experiences people have to some place, they have more of a connection to this place. And when they have these connections, they build this understanding. And the more experiences, the more connections, the more understandings that they have. And then they have, they start developing passion. Uh, and they also have these means to protect this area. And for instance, all of these children that we take out. After a trip, they have this sense of pride mm -hmm. about talking about their big backyard. And then there's conservation involved. They're, they're doing things like more beach cleanups. They're educating others, which is really, really important, like their family. Education, I think, has to be, um, and connecting people to place um, is one of the most important things and the things that I love the most about it. You know, we have the, the power to educate people on the history of our oceans and how resilient they are and what they've gone through and how they've transformed over time. And, you know, enabling them to make better decisions sustainably, um, even when it comes to something as simple as looking for sustainable seafood options. So again, really, it's quite empowering that people really get, you know, interested and it sparks this interest because of that connection piece. Mm -hmm. And they get really interested in what they can do to help, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And one of the biggest things, too, is that emotional connection. Mm -hmm. So when people see like an orca or a humpback, these big, beautiful, majestic animals, 
And then you, you're like, oh, but then you kind of point and you're like, but this animal eats herring. So herring is really important. And then you talk about the ecology and why every single little animal is important. But it starts with that emotional connection. Exactly. Is, yeah, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just go for it. Like, I, <laughs> both of us are from Calgary, Alberta. We're both <laughs> yeah. from prairies, okay? Like, no <laughs> marine life. Um, but we just kind of went for it. We made the move. I just applied and I started out here working in the office selling tours. I started what they call, you know, the bare minimum, just hanging up suits and washing suits. Um, and then I was able, as you know, years passed and I got my education um, in marine science, uh, marine biology at the University of Victoria, um, I started developing my own career here. Again, being from Calgary originally, I started in interior design, believe it or not. I only really, I didn't even finish one semester but I've always loved being outside. And really what stemmed my passion to swap to biology was scuba diving. So I took a couple months off, went to Australia with some friends and I just fell in love with being underwater. So from there, I went back to Calgary, swapped over to biology. Then I moved to Prince Rupert and I did a couple of years uh, more over there. And I did, took coastal ecology and marine biology and some terrestrial studies in there as well. And I took internships also that was able to uh, carry over some of my credits when I was overseas. So look for internships, they're awesome. So I have a little bit of everything and then I filled in the rest of my degree with online courses. So yeah, I just kind of, like Sydney just kind of did it all in one shot. I was a little bit scattered, but that's okay. So that's, you know, another route you can do in order to kind of get to where you want to be. You can become a captain. You, become, you, you can become a marine engineer. You can get school and work in like hospitality and tourism. Um, or you can be a marine naturalist and you can go and take, do marine biology, marine sciences. You can be doing research. You can be doing education programs. Like my dream was to do this program and Egoing's like, ah, do it then. <laughs> um, so I created my dream job through this job. Um, ecotourism is really powerful um, nowadays and it's not just taking people out to show them wild animals there's a lot more that can be done with it like especially Eagle Wing is doing a really great job but there's so much opportunity for other companies to do it and you need you know passionate individuals like Megan and I to just and just just kind of go just go for it as far as just kind of resources out there there's lots of free yeah. re resources to get you involved in thinking and Victoria's got such a great science-based community that there's lots of free lecture events but you can go to all these talks learn as much as you can and you know you can see really if that's going to stem your passion kind of in this field leading into this field mm -hmm. yeah definitely and even like volunteer mm -hmm. or get out in the water exactly. or if you like photography like um, offer your photography services we have photographers that come on board and they just practice but the photos we use um, in our social media platforms and things like that so for me, it was um, literally working on a boat. <laughs> um, it didn't clue in that I was going to be on a boat. And um, it take, took me some time to adjust because you're constantly moving on a boat. Um, so it takes time to develop sea legs. Yeah. And you are outside. You are in the elements. And the Salish Sea, sometimes, sometimes she has a lot of energy in her. And you never know where you're going. You never know what you're going to see. And your plans change every two minutes. Um, you work long days, um, you are in the elements, you are in, it's like you're immersed in the Salish Sea. And it's hard work. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think that we just like hang out with whales. Um, <laughs> but it's actually, it's, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot of safety aspects to it. I like to refer to us as, yeah, like seasickness experts. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes we're coaching people who are getting over their fear of being on the water. You know, we're comedic set time. Yeah. I found out that we spend more time on the water than a lot of marine biologists actually get to spend time on the water, mm -hmm. um, which I'm really grateful for because um, believe it or not, when you're spending 14 hours a day out on the water sometimes, um, your social life, it, it, it happens, but it's more with whales. Yeah. Um, so you develop, <laughs> yeah. you get to actually see the personality of these whales and you actually get to know these whales personally, yeah. um, which was a massive surprise to me. Like. Um, and just learning through through observation of exactly. these animals. Yeah. Just follow your passion and don't be don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of the work. One of the mm -hmm. things a lot of people are scared of in the sciences is math. Don't worry about math. Mm -hmm. You'll be okay. 
um, and start building connections. Start talking to people. Come and talk to us. Mm -hmm. We're over at, we're down at Fisherman's Wharf. Um, we'll take you on a boat and we'll give you hands-on experience of what it's actually like. Um, you're always welcome to, to talk with us because we want to inspire you um, and we want your passions to grow. So. Exactly.